Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Wednesday. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about Shakti processor. So let's dive right into it. So what is this Shakti processor? Basically, it's India's first home-built microprocessor. Now this is a very big thing. Now it the idea, the dream about it started in 2012 in IIT Madras. Now in IIT Madras is basically like MIT of India. So the idea was start to end basically from paper to like final product it must be done in house basically in India itself so design to manufacturing all must be done in India. So that is the idea of Shakti processor. So how does this work? Well, any Tom, Dick and Harry can make a processor because that's how China does. So, and even in India, even in Vietnam, anybody can make a processor. That's the easy part. However, designing a processor, to give you a context of that, there is only two corporation, three if you count AMD, that can actually manufacture processors. One is ARM, another is Intel, third is basically AMD. And in terms of architecture, there is only two architecture on this planet that is x86 and ARM architecture. There are certain boutique architecture used for like uh, mission, uh, science missions and all that. But like in terms of commercial enterprise and like uh, public use, only two primary architecture exists. So to solve this issue, uh, RISC V was created, the instruction set architecture basically it was created RISC V. Now this was created in University of California in Berkeley. So the problem with uh, current computer education is that they teach you about instruction set okay like if you want to design a kernel you want to uh, create a processor you have to know this thing so okay they teach it but here's the problem they can't show you real world example basically x86 they can't show you because that's proprietary from intel they can't even show you uh, basically intel architecture is what we classify as sys architecture now uh, when you are talking about risk architecture risk architecture is from arm so to understand this more thoroughly please watch this video in that you will understand risk 5 so professors in uh, basically university came together and they created risk 5 architecture and they started to expand it basically went from okay uh, arch, uh, you know imaginary architecture for uh, basically computer books they went into like okay let's make it an actual product and they made it 100 percent uh, patent free 100 percent royalty free so basically any tom dick and harry can take the design learn from it it evolve it or design it or just copy paste it they don't have to worry about it. they can actually go on an instruction set now instruction set is kind of a very tricky because it's only successful if other people uses it think of it this way if you are uh, familiar with uh, old music player basically you must be familiar with cassette why this became successful was this the only option hell no there were like at least five to ten other cassette design from eight track to like rca track systems and all that there were a lot of designs so the reason this became successful because everybody was using it you can buy a DAC from uh, basically sony or uh, samsung and it will work you can buy a cassette player for your car truck anything and it will work that's the whole point uh, architecture is also like that you can design a processor in your home you can like that can be the best processor out there but if nobody uses it it's pointless so these people use the architecture from this fact because architecture must be used by other people otherwise you design a processor you connect a ram and it's like yeah ram is not detected you design a processor you connect a memory chips it's like yeah incompatible so they took the architecture and built the processor now if a lot of people started to use this, this will become a success story it must be used by other people not by these people but must by other people's now to simplify this, you have to understand there's a very complicated pipeline introduced uh, like in current architecture. So simplifying that architecture, right now the granddaddy of uh, computer architecture is ARM architecture, simply because for every x86 sold, there is at least three ARM sold. And ARM is used in everywhere, from a smart TV to your camera, to your uh, basically smart meter, to refrigerator, to everything, Fitbit and everything has like basically ARM again. So ARM is like taking over the world. And it's not just like, okay, small, low power deficiency. ARM is basically, uh, risk based architecture so it is actually inherently efficient but right now even arm because it has so many developer working for it now they have reached a point where they are actually making server hardware and i mean actual server hardware is now being made for arm so how this works is like arm people in arm uh, corporation they will like do the work they will design the core every time like you see x86 uh, i'm saying x86 uh, basically a72 or a35 or a67 whatever the number they come in, that is the designation of core like this is what they do this is what arm people do they design the core now this core design will be sent to Samsung and Samsung will be like okay let, let's take the core design and mix it whatever we need to mix in like uh, let's say Wi-Fi chip uh, camera decoding chip whatever they need to they will add on that and then they will make their own product they will call it Exynos like Samsung Exynos and the same process will happen with uh, ARM 
will making a core then they will sell it to qualcom and qualcom will call it snapdragon now this happens with everything including iphone the reason for that is basically arm architecture is like uh, ported for linux uh, linux unix basically and uh, that is the fundamental basis of all the operating system basically from ios to actual uh, android both are running on the same architecture that's why even apple have to pay money large amount of money not in millions but in billions to arm corporation so from uh, basically apple to snapdragon to qualcomm to uh, samsung to exynos to everything including mediatek to some uh, chiron from uh, hawaii and all that they all have to pay a serious amount of money to arm because of their core designs now in terms of desktop when you're talking desktop environment and some server environment you have to pay basically either intel or amd because both of them are sharing quote unquote the x86 architecture they make the cpu that is why there is no uh, other company that is making uh, basically x86 architecture so they will make the design and they themselves will launch the product like i9 9900k 9, or amd will release their ryzen 9 3900x so this is how it works now in terms of uh, simplicity you have to understand it this way arm is going open source arm is not open source as in like arm is like i will build it and you manufacture it they just design it they are just a designing firm they design the damn thing and they make sure it's compatible with all the software and you manufacture it that's why samsung can manufacture it that's why qualcomm can manufacture it because samsung is much bigger manufacturer than intel but they cannot manufacture x86 because x86 is not for sale but arm is for sale that's the whole point with arm so risk 5 is a different approach risk 5 is like open source so uh, the iit madras basically the university in india they created a group subgroup inside uh, iit uh, and they created risk rise group and this group people they created a product that product is the sakti processor that is you have to understand the architecture is risk 5 they they took the architecture they designed the core they designed the processor and they created the processor which we call sakti so there is a lot of myth about it and this uh, makes me like my head hurt uh, if this includes from times of india to youtubers it's like in times of india this could challenge global major like intel and amd that's why like it's not the target of risk 5 that's it's very frustrating to explain basically think of it this way uh, there is only two architecture arm and uh, x86 both are very seriously guarded like you can uh, like even if you are using it in your missile they will not tell you what how the exact the processor works you will not find out like that is why the uh, spectrum vulnerability and all that that was in the interprocessor was so undiscovered for so long it was there it's just the moment somebody started exploiting it, it took them time to like the word to reach to intel okay there is an actual problem in that so that whole uh, environment of the computation world relies on the uh, compatibility with the software because you can design your own processor you can design your own software it's just that nothing else will work on it so basically you can't make a processor without an app store so for this reason intel and amd is the king now what india is doing is basically they are supporting uh, another race uh, basically another horse in the race the risk 5 architecture risk 5 is completely opposite it's like okay let's open it up and everybody should help it out so there are so many people who are like you know supporting it which includes uh, there was one indian youtuber who said india's new snapdragon killer qualcomm is the main uh, founder of this qualcomm is like uh, platinum uh, funded basically they are the founder samsung is platinum iit madras is uh, founder silver and uh, cdac is another indian company it's a silver basically these are there are uh, platinum members they are pouring in their intellectual property now that is the core reason that's why you can't design uh, your architecture in your home because without them like let's say samsung is giving their memory protocols okay this is how the memory is supposed to be written to and read from and then let's say qualcomm is giving like uh, their wi-fi encryption system siemens is giving how the heck you're gonna do high speed networking communication there are all these companies google is giving let's say their neural network and all that nvidia is doing the ai processing and all that so every company is pouring something into the risk 5 and risk 5 is like a free for all you can take it design whatever you want to and uh, just do uh, like if you find a bug please fix it that's it that's all that's all you have to do so the idea of this is 100 percent ingenious processor it's not now of course it's designed from actual design pen and paper to actual processor it can be done in india and has been done in india that's the whole point of this but the architecture must be uh, taken from her because as of now there is only one or two country that has that one is usa another is uh, uh, britain there is no other 
country, well, not even China. Basically, there are many manufacturers of processor, but the design in terms of architecture, and I'm not talking about boutique, I'm talking mass production one, there's only two architectures. So Risk Five wants to break that. Now, India is helping Risk Five breaking that. Like, okay, Risk Five is like ARM, where it has multiple people helping it out. So Samsung is helping a, a Risk Five, India is helping Risk Five, everybody is helping Risk Five. That's why Risk Five will break uh, basically Intel and not the Sakti processor. Risk Five will fight them. So then why the heck India invested so much money into making this? Well, uh, in terms of the people who work on the project, like what is the reason why they are making it? Basically, they are making it for strategic use and education sector. Basically, in terms of processor, if you are following the whole story, you must be aware of the fact that India's manufacturing ability, like in-house manufacturing, barely goes to 130 nanometer. Now, if you think that number is too huge, that's absolutely true because at this point in time, other mobile processor like from Snapdragon and Samsung, they have reached a point where they are like at seven nanometer and soon they will release five nanometer so why the heck this is so behind schedule now again india has to learn these things basically we are just beginning and we have to learn these things however even though that is the case it is very useful for isro because isro makes things that leaves the atmosphere you have to understand this way in all everything that is exposed to high radiation environment basically like a nuclear submarine or a space uh, craft you want the processor to be made of a thicker basically a bigger chip architecture the reason for that is bit flip will not happen easily because every time the moment you leave the atmosphere you start to get bombarded with what we call high energy particles now this particle will change your transistor state so basically your transistor is like on it will go to off on to off now this is supposed to happen only using electricity only trading new lectures but when you are in outside our atmosphere radiation will just keep changing it so the smaller it is basically 7 nanometer or 5 nanometer it will change randomly like uh, it will change by even a small amount of radiation so to make sure radiation hardening this first thing they do they just make it bigger basically even if they can manufacture it they won't they will make it like 150 nanometer 130 nanometer or sometimes 200 nanometer which was used for curiosity rovers so it is very lovely aspect for uh, Indian space organization. They are like, yeah, that's, uh, your processor is not too small. We don't want it to be small. So they are very happy because right now they have to go to other companies like uh, basically ARM and it's like, okay, we want to create a controller. Either you have to give that or they have to spend time building it for themselves, then figuring out how the heck we can uh, uh, communicate with the memory, all that. That also will take amount of time. So instead of rather than building a rocket in two years, they will build a rocket in six years because they are not in control of the processor art aspect. This will be really helpful for India basically ISRO ISRO can be like yeah uh, okay this processor is not working for satellite uh, there is this bug okay this is how you fix it they don't have to worry about these things so for ISRO it is a very like a golden goose now in terms of Department of Defense this is Defense Research and Development Division jo DRDO of India that's a golden sign. That's a because they can uh, basically study the processor. Whichever they're buying, they can study it on a deeper level. Basically, if you buy Intel processor, you are not allowed to research it into deep. Like you can open it up, but good luck with that. That's a they put enough encryption there that it is it's a basically false error. And you will never find out whether there is a leak in that. Basically, that quote unquote uh, spy chip. Basically, if it's uh, bypassing encryption or does it have backdoors? Because the modern processors are so complex, it cannot be tangibly done. Like you will spend at least two years trying to figure out what's happening so that two year is wasted but when it's open source when it's made in India first you have a very much uh, secure uh, like quality control type and even if there is a fault let's say there is a branch predictor which is faulty same as let's say uh, spectrum meltdown in Intel processor you can easily patch it you don't have to talk to someone else it's like okay there is an issue let's fix it up or heck you can even be like okay this processor is there but it is vulnerable to let's say electronic attack on the processor level you can go like okay just disable every wireless communication flat out so because right now in uh, basically war front electronic warfare is becoming a very serious threat so having a very good trite quality control on your processors are really important so for these two this is golden set there is no communication they don't care whether it's like you know 7 nanometer or 22 nanometer or whatever they like is it indian yes is it like fully secured yes awesome for isro it's amazing that it is one uh, basically 100 plus nanometer for drdo the security is more than good enough so these are the basically golden goose for them and then uh, another company came uh, was created a startup in core now this company's sole reason is there is just gonna sell indian processor to indian products for internet of things basically let's say india is slowly starting to install what we call smart meter and let's say some indian mobile manufacturer that used to exist basically like micromax and all that and they want to create their own product they don't have to go to samsung hey samsung can you sell us the, your exynos or to snapdragon or to qualcomm it's like hey can you sell us that they don't have to do that they can just like hey uh, basically 
basically income sell us that so there will be a lot less uh, money over, uh, requirement and because it will be completely open source everybody who's fixing anything will be uh, shared along everywhere so let's say uh, samsung built a process and they found out this is the issue that everybody will know about that so for that reason income is responsible for selling the basically processor to the public that's the whole idea of income basically you will never supposed to hear about this it's just income will sell to manufacturers who are making let's say uh, smart devices to whatever have you and uh, their research shows that in india's case 80 percent of internet of things can be taken care of by the processor they have already built they don't need to build something superior right now they're like okay this is more than enough for 80 percent of things and the more they will develop in-house the more they will learn the more uh, better they will eventually over time once the risk started to become more ported towards windows and uh, they will become more compatible with the, everything and they will soon uh, you know transition to processors and server things and all that because they have like foundation is being laid out for artificial intelligence neural network and all that all of that is there i have provided the link down below and it is very useful for India's education system. Right now, India's education system is like, uh, in terms of uh, how abroad sees it, is very simple. It's like uh, they make good workers, but they don't make people who are like you know capable of doing things uh, without any instruction. Basically, we make very good people. It's like okay, if this is your job, do it. Indians are like, I got this. We are awesome at that. The moment you're like, okay, this is a blank paper, do something with it. India is like, no. That is why India does not. Even though it has like, India's education system is so damn hard that IIT graduation is harder than MIT post graduation like literally there are Indians who have done both of them and this is what they will say like yeah dude uh, if you can pass IIT MIT is like you know child's play like there are literally people who are like yeah MIT is that easy for for Indians but in terms of actual practicality we have no experience this is what they want to solve like this is like this is to push India into digital era it's like okay Indians know how to build processor so this is a very long-term investment. This will not show us any fruit in like, let's say five years from now or 10 years from now. They're supposed to show fruit in next generation, but it would be amazing. This is the sole reason why uh, USA has the like, Silicon Valley, even though half of half what, like almost 80% of their things we do, Indians do. Like basically you can literally go to any uh, Silicon Valley and it's like, okay, how many things you are outsourcing to India in terms of pro uh, software problem? Yeah, this is, this is, this is that. Like there is a Indian company known as Tata Consultancy Services, TCS. Almost everything is done there. Everything. Like I worked for Sony. I worked for Microsoft. I worked for St uh, Starbase when I was a game developer uh, for like uh, two, three years. Like in just that much, I worked for four projects. And it was common. Like many people like, yeah, this Star Wars. Yeah, we got that. Oh, uh, Suicide Squad, we got Like one of my friends actually had the access to that. He saw the whole movie before it was even like edited. So it is very common for us. But we don't have people who are like, you know, I'm gonna put my foot down and I'm gonna build something. We don't have builders. We have very good workers, but don't have builders. To solve that, we want to do that. Okay, they will show the foundation like, okay, you can start from scratch. You can take an architecture, you can build a processor and you can make a product, do it. So this was my presentation on uh, basically Shakti processor. I hope you liked it, learn from it. In that case, please leave a like button. If you didn't like it, didn't learn from it, I would urge you to press dislike. Please press dislike button twice to show me your extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.